extents possible to man that we will be taking an insightful look on today in relation to adult learning and how it can be integrated for many individuals through the platforms that are available today. But for many persons, the choice of entering into a new field or a field at a later stage in life can bring about despair for one reason or the other. Perhaps it's finances, family, lack, lack of family, family, family support, the spouse, partner, perceptions, or even the influence of time. But whatever the reason, here we can find in our discussion today, tidbits of hope for adult learners where they can now integrate themselves into the learning platforms that are available, not just the traditional school setting, but also in skills and training. To help us in our discussion, we have three S experts in the field. The 24th president of the Northern Caribbean University, Dr. Lincoln Edwards. From the Heart NSTA Trust, Dr. Sim Hugh. And from the Jamaica Union Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, Dr. Roy Dennis. Welcome. Thank you. I trust and hope that you would have had a good overview of education, not just from the standpoint of youngsters, but also from the standpoint of adult learners. Dr. Edwards, share with us at Northern Caribbean University, what are some available tools or resources for adult learners that exist? Well, uh, thank you, Pastor Oliphant, for that question. Well, Northern Caribbean University, from its very inception, uh, has served as both the emblem and the engine mm. uh, to provide opportunities for persons who would like to further their uh, careers. And so we have a variety of options. For example, one of the things we have done, you know, the traditional entry requirement is five uh, CSEC subjects mm -hmm. or GC subjects, but now we have factored in uh, the work that people have done, prior learning and the work that they have done. And so credit can be assigned to that as part of the entry requirement mm -hmm. so that pe persons, even if they don't have the five subjects initially, they can use their experience to enter into Northern Caribbean University, and that gives them opportunities. Of course, we have the online uh, capabilities that yes. allow uh, adult learners, mm -hmm. our other learners, to to really participate. And very importantly, uh, we are into stackable credentials. So micro-credentialing is a big um, idea now that people are grabbing onto. So the idea is that you may want to do a, a degree in a particular area, and you can't leave your job to enter full-time into studies. So you can take a, four, a, a few courses while you're on the job, and those can be stacked over the years towards your degree. So you can stay on the job, take some courses, and then and allow time to just, and when you have achieved the relevant credits, then you, know, you will be awarded your degree. So this is a big thing that a lot of persons are now grabbing onto, and the schools are now you know, creating these flexible learning pathways mm. so that individuals can achieve their goals while they, they continue to work and care for their families. We're going to be touching on those a little bit later, but I like the insights that you have given so far, especially with the stackable credentials and the flexible arrangements for work and study. We're going to be looking on that because work and study has been known to be part of the feature of the Northern Caribbean University from its days of inception at West Indian Training College coming down to West Indies College. We have another institution here represented by Dr. Shim Hugh, which is actually the heart NSTA Trust Correct. has gone through a revolution over the last three, four years, is it? Yes, yes, definitely three years. Yeah. 2019, we merged as an entity with the National Youth Service, the Jamaica Foundation for Lifelong Learning, and the Apprenticeship Board. And the mission of 
part is to facilitate and ensure the development of human capital. So whatever your age or stage, we promote skills pay the bills. Yeah. And that is just the focus of what we do. Um, so especially for persons who are of a particular age, we have workforce development. You could be on the job for years and not certified. Mm. We have prior learning assessment. We also pride ourselves on job qualifications. Employers have been telling us we want persons who are skilled in a particular area. Because what does general construction mean? But I know a tiler. I know a welder. I know a mason. So we are are able now to certify at those levels so persons can feel empowered persons can feel as if they're a part of the development of the nation i'm going to be touching with you with the jfll because yes. that has been a feature of the jamaican educational landscape that many times has not been given its due credit Correct. tell us about the jfll even though now it's under the umbrella of um ns heart nsd because we're focusing on adult learning bring the, our listeners and viewers into the realm what is jfll what was its mission what did it set out to accomplish and how is heart nsda incorporating it in its mission so jfll now infused in heart is the high school diploma equivalency program and in other words we see it as the adult education arm of heart focused primarily on numeracy and literacy of adults in, uh, yes. let me let me help you here to, for just to make sure all of our viewers understand because individuals of a particular age would have passed the high school correct age cohort they will now be able to get the same learning post that time is that what you're saying? You are indeed correct. Um, however, our training on the adult education is from 17 upwards. There's no limit to the upwards. Uh -huh. So we have seen, however, mm -hmm. quite a bit of adults who through their years would have put themselves on the back burner in order for their children to mm -hmm. be able to be educated. Mm -hmm. They now want to be able to read their Bibles, mm -hmm. learn how to read their Bibles, learn how to complete an application form for a driver's license. Yeah. And they come to us to be empowered. So we provide for them the different levels of training for numeracy, literacy, yes. and CXCs. So they, the end result, hence the high school, is for them achieving five CXCs. And that has been a big push and a big win for the transformation of the nation. And I see you're referring to the Bible, and that is, of course, our yes, book right here, right, right at IELP Bookstore at 74 Constant Spring Road. And that brings me into someone who has served, not just as a pastor, not just as an academic, but someone who is also in the field of counseling and psychology and understands the basis and the, and the psychological impact of adult learning. Dr. Roy Dennis. Yes. Uh, share with us your experience. I know you're going to be drawing from your well, which is so diverse, but share with us your experience in terms of pastoral ministry as a director and also as a counseling psychologist. Your experience with individuals who are adult learners. Do you find that they're of a different ilk um, than those who are in the younger cohort, more matured? How, how do you find them? Let me, let me start. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Let me just start by saying that the benefits mm -hmm. of preparation is clearly documented in our society. Mm -hmm. uh, when a person is equipped, they are able to provide for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, they are able to provide for their families. Mm -hmm. They are more confident mm -hmm. about themselves and the future. And so... And some persons might not achieve as early as others, but we normally say better late than never. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yes. So, so uh, the, the church has offered a number of programs to assist persons who did not get it at their first try. And um, what we find is that this, maybe the question you ask is whether they're of a different ink. I wouldn't say that they're of a different ink. As a matter of fact, um, we have had pers uh, programs for um, adults, mm -hmm. and we find that persons who did not get the C-SEC at their first try, sometimes they are, they are even quicker um, out of the blocks right. when they are more mature. Okay. For example, we have had the programs where persons would do five or seven subjects within one year, 
and uh, we had a similar a program in, in um, at the Sydney Church, for instance, mm -hmm. and. Um, there were individuals who were able to do five, seven C-sex subjects in one year, and they are successful at them. So persons are able to do well as they settle down in life if they are willing, you know, if they want to achieve, if they are willing to learn. And so the church offers that opportunity um, for them to do well. We're so very happy when we hear about the church's integration of literacy and numeracy. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we recognize that that is an integral aspect of it. Uh, Dr. Shim, you perhaps you are uniquely positioned because the Northern Caribbean University is an academic institution. Of course, Dr. Edwards will tell us that they do have practical elements inside. Yes. And the pastor, um, Pastor Dennis, Dr. Dennis will tell you that the church mainly focuses on the religious and spiritual aspect. But Heart NSTA is unique in the sense that it's broad focus is on Correct. skills training. Correct. Uh, what, do your what, what, what do your demographic deta details tell you about adult learning? So first, I must say that there is a bridge. We, we are yes. interlinked because in my region, Region 6, Spanish Town and St. Catherine, we have a very great relationship with Spanish Town SDA. They mm -hmm. offer as a community training intervention, and we have partnered quite well with other um, religious entities to ensure that the nation, the landscape is transformed. By a way of demographic, we have about 45% of adults, and when I say adults, I want to say persons between the ages of 27 to even 80. Wow. We have had instances of 79-year-olds, wow. 80-year-olds mm -hmm. graduating mm -hmm. with their certificate. And I believe we are also interlinked because we want to see Jamaica under God transformed. And that means focusing on the complete man. So separate and apart from our skills training, we also infuse employability skills. We infuse what it takes to not only be a good practitioner for our way of skill, but also to be a great human being. And of course, everything that we do is tied to that which the Lord lays out as the foundation and go out and teach and preach, we have seen that the adults are more focused. Those who have started their journey at a later date are more focused, more diligent, more determined to prove the narrative wrong. You know what I did, no dash away? Hey. Right. They are, they are determined to ensure that they come out on the right side. And at heart, we want to say that we give a hand up and not a hand out. Ah, yes. I like that. You're, yes. you're giving us some gems. At heart, we give a hand up, yes. not a hand out. And earlier you spoke about skills, skills pay, the pay the bills. Correct. And it's very real because, Dr. Dr. Edwards, when I was growing up, when individuals were asked what they want to be in life, pastor, it was never a pastor. Mm -hmm. It was always something like being a, a lawyer and a doctor and a whatever have you. But now we're seeing society understanding that there is a shift in the paradigm. That learning is not just in relation to the intellectual in terms of IQ, but we are now seeing individuals coming in recognizing that the skills are important. The mechanic is even important. The, the hairdresser is even important as the teacher and the doctor. How is Northern Caribbean University helping in this shift? This shift of focus from just mere academic to skills training, as Dr. Shim Hugh has noted? Well, you know, as technology advances, uh, you know, many traditional jobs will no longer exist in the future mm -hmm. because artificial intelligence can do those jobs. And so people have to be aware of those, but there will always be the need for skills, you know, certain skill sets. So we have formed what we call VT, the Vocational Empowerment and Educational Training Institute, that will allow persons who need specific skills to acquire those through VT. And we have also had discussion with HART to forge partnerships that will allow some of the training to take place that HART normally does take place at NCU. For example, in the area of technology, we are well known um, mm -hmm. in that area. And so, for example, when we had the, when COVID-19 impacted us, we partnered with the ministry to train um, teachers in the public education system 
how to um, offer their lectures online. And so we are partnering with different institutions now so that technology can be a part of what people do. So again, as I said, through VT, we are able to empower people with specific skills, uh, digital animation and, and those things. Also, we, there's an opportunity for adult learners who are not technology savvy to apply to NCU to learn these, to get certified in specific courses that will help them to better understand the technology. So we are rolling out at NCU a, a, a number of courses that are specific to the needs of persons in the society. So as long as we know what people want, we are, our duty is to provide it at NCU, and we're partnering with the churches and with other institutions. It wasn't um, so long ago, I, you know, one church member said to me that, you know, we need the young people who are even adults who work with us in the media center to be certified because they are helping, they are doing, but they are not certified. So we now want to develop those courses so that they can be certified uh, so that when they go out, they have that sense of pride and accomplishment. And as I mentioned, we are partnering with HEART. You know, uh, the, there's discussion so that together we can empower the Jamaican people. Because this is not one institution versus another. These are many institutions coming together to move the Jamaican people forward and, and be prepared for the future. And we are not leaving anyone behind. So adults must feel secure and feel confident that, that at NCU we have their interest at heart and we are partnering with heart and other institutions uh, so that they can achieve their goals. A revolutionary impact, you would say, Dr. Dennis? Oh, yes. Um, the church um, partners with various institutions to provide education. The Seventh-day Adventist Church is largely about education. Mm -hmm. While there are some denominations that might focus more on the emotions, and emotions yes. are important. Yes. But if you should categorize the Seventh-day Adventist Church, you would say it's a, it's a church that focuses more on the rational yes. and uh, than the emotional. So, so, so uh, even in our church services, you will see that a lot of teaching takes place. Mm -hmm. And the structure of the church, we have various institutions from the baby is born. We have preschool, we have primary school, yes. we have high school. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, some of the churches partner with NCU and HEART in order to have um, extension programs for adults who did not get the CSEC and we have Northern Caribbean University and our universities. Um, so our philosophy focuses on um, preparation for the whole man yeah. and for the whole period of existence available to man. So as long as we are alive, we are learning. And as long as the church exists, we will participate with every institution and entity that is focusing on building the mental, the physical, and the spiritual capacity of man. The Apostle Paul puts it this way in Ephesians chapter 4. He says that God gives gifts and he gives these gifts for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come up or grow up to the measure of the stature of the fullness of man in Jesus. How can that be done unless we have true education? The kind of education which Ellen White spoke of when she says it has to do with the whole being and with the whole period of existence possible to man. So education is not just for children. Education is not just for youth. Education is indeed for all of us. You are watching Bless TV's special seminar, Despair, Career or Despair. We'll be back with you on the other side of this break. When I left my community in Lilliput, Montego Bay, very volatile area, know what will happen come August 2020 when I graduate. But from I stepped foot on this campus in spring 2016, God has been with me. Four years like our time. Some of you 
started in Northern Caribbean University. I did not know what to expect. I did not know who to contact. I did not know where to go. But all I needed to do, in my heart, I knew that I needed to do that, and that is to be there on the campus of Northern Caribbean University. Thirty percent of our total youth population comprises unattached young people. That's an alarming number that we are aiming to reduce with the help of the Eyes Mentorship Initiative. Five years ago, you could catch me smoking and drinking at any hours of the day. Being in state care, I lacked some guidance that I really needed. Since joining this program, I had gotten baptized and I'm closer to achieving my goals. The West Jamaica Conference's Eyes Mentorship Program is an initiative that seeks to target at-risk youth by pairing them with trained mentors to positively impact their lives. Have you selected the mentorship coordinator for your church so that you can benefit from the district level training? Start the process now. Get involved. For more information, send us a WhatsApp message at 876 853-4705 and follow us on Instagram at Eyes Mentorship as we empower youth and engage society for the building of a better nation. Welcome back to Bless TV's special seminar, Career or Despair, speaking about adult learning and how it has pivoted in the midst of the pandemic. On the other side, we had a conversation with some of our educators. This time, we're going to be going to sample students within the educational sector. And we have here with us two students, uh, as they then were. We have with us, to aid in this conversation, Rochester Reed and Chad Anthony Cook. Welcome, gentlemen. Hi. Hi, Father. Welcome. Rochester, speak with me. Uh, uh, you, you went to heart when you were 40... Two, three, something like that. 42, 43. Yeah. Come on. Why, why were you going back to school so yes, at that age? Tell us, what was <laughs> motivating you to, 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 to get that heart NSDA certification? certification. Um, I was in a, to me, it was, I was in a job feeling not going anywhere. Mm. Granted, I, I was making money. In, I was making good money. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't feeling that energy. And I was searching, searching. In fact, when it was announced at my church, Brayton SDA, mm -hmm. that they had this program going on, it was not a matter of me jumping to it. It was a matter of me being there. <laughs> so they offered it, and I took it up right away to go to um, Jagas, just to do the pursue the, the course of um, It was mechanics, but the old what Jagas does, it gives you the whole entire thing. And then after the second year now, while in the second year, you choose where you want to specialize in. And I specialize in what I, I really was interested in, that was AC. Let's backtrack a little. You said you were in a, in that, in a, in a field before. Yes. Because many adult learners are either already in a field or they're out of a, a field. field. Yeah. What, what, what is it that, which field were you in? I was and, a... 
Yeah. I was a taxi operator. Oh, you were a, you were a taxi operator. Yeah. And how was that for you? It was good, man. Because, At first. Yeah, it was good because it, it's not the taxi operator you see on the road here now. Oh, bless the Lord. You know, it was uh, the proper driving. Yes, man. The proper yeah, man. <laughs> yes, man. It was the taxi operator. It, 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 what, what they have now kind of feel embarrassed. You feel embarrassed to we, say you were a taxi yeah, driver. Yeah, yes. And so you wanted more for yourself. I wanted more. You, and I noted that you said that you were making a lot of money. Normally, individuals, money is a very good consideration for them in a, mm -hmm. in a position. You, Why would you want to give up what was sure for perhaps what would have been unsure? Be, because of the, the, the era that I was operating taxi in and the, the environment, I was in the Spanish town here. Yes. And I wouldn't want to go any further than just All in right. the Spanish town here. And so... At, at that age and stage of your life, you pivoted into a new era. Did you have any fears? Did you have any drawbacks? Did you? I had um, not fear, I had a bit of doubt of how, how would I, I would manipulate in the, our, in the system. Going back to school, mm -hmm. and, and, and it's not that I've never been to school before. Yes. But going back to school and then the age factor, and I was questioning myself, and you know, I, my age, going back to school and the age of those I would encounter at the school. Right. And the teachers, how they would react to me as an adult. You, you might say, but they are there to, to, to help you, to mm -hmm. facilitate you. But then at your age, you're looking at I'm an adult and I might meet up with a few teachers who are younger than me, which I did. Wow. And in fact, I met a, a guy who I went to school with, who was a teacher mm -hmm. at the school. And it was good. It, was a, it started out nervous. But trust me, after the first two weeks, I was in it. But that, that's a lot there that you have just said, a lot of compartmentalization and uh, analysis that goes in. What helped you to get over it and to say, all right, I'm going to do it in spite of? I had a wife who was a teacher. I have a wife who was a teacher. Yes. I have two daughters who, when she comes home, they are teachers. Oh, support system. So the support system was great. Support system. In fact, when I, when, I, when I finished school in the night, because it was even at Jagas, mm -hmm. and I go, I, my wife had already segmented up a spot in the dining room away from everyone, mm -hmm. and that is where my second class study would right. be. And she would go over with me and help me. And, tell, and, from that, and I had um, friends at church who, maths was a problem with me. Okay. So I had two friends at, at church who were in the banking system, mm -hmm. and they're good friends of mine. So I went to them and asked them, and they, Sabbath evening, mm -hmm. it was my class upstairs with them. And now <clears throat> it's history, because now you are AC operator, you help to service ACs. Yeah, well, what else do you do? High quality auto AC. And High quality. And, and, and split unit maintenance. Yes. Okay. In All install right. repair. I'm sorry we don't have enough time or maybe units yeah. for you to demonstrate that for those who are watching. Yeah. But maybe they can um, touch bases with you. Here we have one individual who has been through adult learning and another who has entered a field where majority of the persons there are in fact adults. How does he fit in? Chad Anthony Cook, tell us about your experience. You're a financial analyst, right? Yeah, yeah I'm an analyst at Signals Capital. At Cygnus. How, how do you find it working in the environment with individuals that are senior to you? Um, it was a, a adjusting process, mm -hmm. um, you know, because these people have been in, in the sector for years mm -hmm. um, and you're just starting yes. in the industry, you know, you're fresh out of school. But fortunately, they don't um, undermine you. They kind of mentor you and say, I was once there. Right. So, you know, it's a learning experience for both of us. Tell me, you, you graduated last year from Northern Caribbean University. Yes. So you see we're, we're, we're matching everything. It's Hart earlier with Dr. Shimhu and um, NCU earlier with Dr. Lincoln. And we actually have individuals. Both of them are Seventh-day Adventists as well. What are some of the essential lessons that you would have learned working with individuals of a different age group? Um, I think the essential lessons were don't be afraid to ask questions. Yes. You know, they always say no question is too stupid to ask, or there's yes. no such thing as a stupid question. And I think um, just collaboration is important. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you need help with something, you know, they're always one step away or one phone call away. Mm -hmm. And they're willing to help regardless of how busy they might be. And if they're really that busy, you know, they make the time for you to help out. Research has showed us, Chad Anthony, that... Um, 
there is the concept of reverse mentoring in the workplace and how the mentoring is normally, to explain it, mentoring is normally between a senior giving advice and guidance to a junior. Yeah. But reverse mentoring now deals with the junior actually giving advice and mentorship and guidance, especially, for example, for example in the field of technology, to the senior. Yeah. Do, you, do you see that even if it is not a formal aspect of the work center, do you see that as part of the relational dynamic at, at your workplace? Yeah, that does happen as well. Because um, as, as I said before, they teach you some stuff that you may not have learned during school or you might not know. And I can also teach them stuff that, you know, this is where the industry is going and this is what is happening. Mm -hmm. um, I found that because of my good writing skills, yeah. I've been able to say, you know, this is how you can word something to make it easier to understand or to be as technical as you want it, you know, you kind of do it both ways. So a lot, of, a, a lot of adult learners may be sitting at home, Chad, wondering if I come into the workplace, I will have to be giving up myself and my voice and my place to uh, the younger persons in the workplace. To them, what would you say as a younger person in the workplace, seeing reverse mentoring happening in, in your center, uh, what, what would you say to such individuals? Um, I would say there's a space for everyone. You know, we're all here to learn from each other. Um, that's really how growth occurs, whether it's self-growth yes. or self growth for the company itself to achieve its objectives. So I said, as I said before, there's a space for everyone. There's a space for everyone. Uh, so back to you now, Rochester. In the whole dynamic, having listening to, listened to a person like Chad, who represents a particular cohort, um, age cohort, how would you advise younger individuals now yeah um when persons as yourself as adult learners either change careers or enter into the um the educational environment what advice would you give to the younger ones as to how to relate to individuals like you go for it man. go for it because there's never there's never a, 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 a hurdle that you cannot sermon there's never one what I've learned is that even though I went to school and there were younger, younger students there than me, we all found something that we can help each other with. So don't be afraid to take the leap. When you make that step, that is when you will start the journey. The journey only starts when you make the start. Mm -hmm. If you want to achieve something, set goals, but don't set higher goals than you can make. Mm -hmm. Start from little and little make much. Yes. Uh, earlier, earlier, Ch Chad, Rochester, uh, Chad Anthony, um, Rochester would have said that one of the things he was afraid of, uh, you know, was coming into the, this space and having a younger person being in charge of him, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. Uh, how do you see that kind of dynamic, the age difference in terms of leadership? Would you, you know, what would be your consolation or word of hope to somebody who is listening and they're saying who at my age and stage me can't take no young boy I come come you know tell me how to run the show what would be your response to that kind of thinking um i think having a younger person in charge of you it's always an interesting dynamic because the first you're thinking of is the age difference but at the end of the day you're working to get something done that's right so i mean either way it doesn't really matter how old or how young the person is yeah you're trying to get something done and as as you said with the reverse, reverse mentorship earlier mm -hmm. it can happen both ways mm -hmm. i myself am grateful for the mentorship i received so far at the company i'm working for so yeah yeah sounds like a plan so tell me rochester you you started school at 42 you're now 60 61, 61 years old yes. uh well not started school you re-entered re -entered, uh, yes. and, and you know found a new career path in at that age Tell us, uh, you have plans to go any further? Yes, when I, I, I took up uh, art at this, I needed, I need to be more prominent in the electrical fields. So I enrolled in art and they wanted 25. That is the thing that, uh, that, that is hurting us. Mm. They wanted 25 students and up until now, that space cannot be filled for them to call me in to start that. They don't get the 25 people. Okay. So, and it's free. It's free. It's, well, it's free to the student. It costs the taxpayer. Yes, but, you know, <laughs> but if it's free for you to come in and get something 
and don't beg me. Come when on. Dr. Shim Hugh comes back, I'm going to ask her to respond to that because that's a unique perspective, the fact that they, there has to be a particular amount of, for class size, but I don't think there is a, there is a limit in terms of age. But no. you're planning to actually go forward yes, and do more. As much as I can. That's good. Rochester, thank you for that. Chad Anthony, any plans or this is it for you? You've found your, elite, your niche and you're comfortably in your space. What? Uh, I'm not comfortable yet. Um, I plan to either do a master's degree or maybe go for the CFA or CAIA designations. Um, it's either one or two. So I'm still thinking about it. And you're looking about how you also can be able to even help to create an environment that fosters adult learners as well. For sure. All right, there you have it. I think that was an interesting insight from Rochester Reed and from Chad Anthony Cook. Both of them actually sharing with us what it's like on the other side of the spectrum in terms of adult learning. And you're able to get insights and to be able to share. You can share with us in the chat. Let us know what your perspective, what your views are, and of course, your questions. We're going to take a break and we'll be back with you on the other side. I remember when I left my community in Lilliput, Montego Bay, very volatile area. All I had was a dream. I do not know what will happen come August 2020 when I graduate. But from I stepped foot on this campus in spring 2016, God has been with me. Some of you will finish in four years like our time. Some of you will finish in five years. And some of you will be like me. But listen, your story is your story. When I started Northern Caribbean University, I did not know what to expect. I did not know who to contact. I did not know where to go. But all I needed to do, in my heart, I knew that I needed to do that, and that is to be there on the campus of Northern Caribbean University. Thirty percent of our total youth population comprises unattached young people. That's an alarming number that we are aiming to reduce with the help of the Eyes Mentorship Initiative. Five years ago, you could catch me smoking and drinking at any hours of the day. Being in state care, I lack some guidance that are really needed. Since joining this program, I had gotten baptized and I am closer to achieving my goals. The West Jamaica Conference's Eyes Mentorship Program is an initiative that seeks to target at-risk youth by pairing them with trained mentors to positively impact their lives. Have you selected the mentorship coordinator for your church so that you can benefit from the district level training? Start the process now. Get involved. For more information, send us a WhatsApp message at 876 853-4705 and follow us on Instagram at Eyes Mentorship as we empower youth and engage society for the building of a better nation. Welcome back to Bless TV's special seminar, Career or Despair. Yes, this is Bless TV, catch the vision and join the mission. And we've been having an interesting conversation relating to adult learning. If you're just joining us, then we hope you'll be able to catch the earlier part of it. But this segment, we'll be speaking with Othniel and also with Gabrielle. Othniel Blair yes. and Gabrielle Francis. Welcome to our discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. For How are you both? I'm blessed. I'm 
Okay. Gabrielle, you're a student at the Norman Law School. The Norman Manley Law School. <laughs> and Othniel, you are a, a student at the University of Technology, but upcome working wise, I'm a JUTC bus driver. A JUTC bus driver. So let's go right to it with you, Othniel. Your experience is that you do have a daughter. Yes. And something happened while bringing her to evening classes. You got jealous. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it is, I wouldn't say jealous, but more so of motivation for her and that support. Yes. Uh, because as a person, enforcing education in the home, because apart from, from her, I have two other children. Mm -hmm. So a part of the motivation for her was to sit with her in class. And after a few days, sit with her and you know, we were doing it at the 10 City SD, and there was a lot of books, and I just decided one day that I would just sign up myself and just to give that extra support, and the rest is... So you were doing your fatherly duties? Yes. And taking her to classes, to class. evening classes at yes. 10 City, and while waiting on her, you decide to engage yourself with books, with which is books. wonderful. Yes. Ayat Pauk loves that, by yes. the way. And while doing that, you, you got motivated. You said, let's just do this. Do it, what yeah. did you decide to do? Well, uh, CXC subjects at first. Okay. Yeah, maths mm -hmm. and English. And it was a two-year course they were offering to do it. But I purpose that I, I only had one because my daughter only had one year because she was also preparing for CSEC. Oh. So I wanted both of us to have that you know, timely yeah. accomplishment. Yes. Yes, yeah, so I decided to do it, to do both subjects in, in, two, in one year instead of the two. And you did? And I did. And you passed? And I passed them both. And, and, and what happened after? I get extra motivated and decide to, to go for some more. So you and your daughter sat the same exams? The same exams. And what was it like, father and daughter, getting the results and... You know, it, what it, was it like? It, it, was, it was a bittersweet moment because I could celebrate, but she couldn't celebrate the way because she had failed one of oh, the Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But that didn't stop. Because just to have me there, that was her kind of motivation for her. And so you and her went to the exam room together? No, no, we, we, we didn't went to this exam room together mm -hmm. because I did, after did it privately. But oh, she you, did oh, it. Oh, she yes. was attending Waterford um, High School at uh -huh. the time. Yeah. I understand. But we had the same teacher, mm -hmm. English teachers and maths teacher at 10 yes. City. But it, was, it must have been something very heartwarming to actually go through the exams, even though you're at different centers. You would be able to go through after with her and talk it over with her and even study. Yes, man. Most definitely. So in the evening, we'd go through the past papers together. We, you know, we'd help each other, quiz, quizzing each other and so forth. And interesting. Yeah. That's very interesting. And then you moved on and you did what? I moved on. Then I did HSB, Human and Social Development, um, Biology. Biology and social studies, and I've, I've passed those. So I was thinking higher level now, I was thinking university. And Your they, boss now. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that I was on top of the world yes, now. Yes, big leagues now. <laughs> yes, I decided to make you know, small steps yes. to, to, to reach a mountain. So I was told that I needed five, but I was thinking about my age. How old were you at that time? Father four. You were 44 at that time? Father four, wow, yeah. Wow, look at that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so you thought about the age and then what happened after? Well, I, I still pushed myself because I, 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 wasn't do, as I, I wasn't doing it for myself. I was doing it for my children because mm -hmm. I, as a peer, as a father, education is enforced in the home. Mm -hmm. And so to enforce, I wanted to be the best example for them, not only in, 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 in speech, but in, in deeds. But that's powerful. Because uh, th that's very powerful. Normally, parents will set the example by ensuring they get the education, make the provision for the child. But here you're saying you wanted the example not just to be about you sending your child to school, but also about you yourself having demonstrated Treated. success in schooling. Most definitely. Yeah. yeah. And today, you are enrolled. Yes, 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 yes. Where are you studying now? Um, UTEC. What are you doing at UTEC? Child and Adolescent Development. Child and, and, and you're still a JUTC and driver? And I'm still a JUTC bus driver. How do you balance the time? Because that's an interesting part for adult Whoa. learners. I could say it happened, it happened at a, I could say a good time, yes. COVID time. Okay. Yeah, because... To balance going back and forth from Portmore to Utica and, and, and work, it wouldn't be easy for mm -hmm. me at, at first. Mm -hmm. 
So the online class came in, and even though I wasn't prepared for it, but I made the best of it. Yes. Yeah. So the online, it, it, because of it being online, it helped you. It helped me. And with your timing, with work. with work. And of course, the finances, how that works out. Wow. So many of you are at school. Well, as a, as a sole provider, as a sole provider for a family of six, that was a decision that was made from going to the... Family of six, you Family of six. My wife. You mean S-I-X? S-I-X. And I was the sole provider. You need to slow down there. Some people are watching and say, <laughs> what did he just say? Yeah, well, I was the only one working because other children were going to school. My wife wasn't employed at the time. Right. So the decision to even go to um, 10 City for even class was actually a sacrifice. Because it was something that I wanted to do long, from a longer time, but because of the... The responsibility I have, I couldn't, I couldn't see myself giving up because every hour is very important to me. Every yes. hour means yes. an extra dollar for me, yes. for, for the family. Yes. So to, to, make that, to make that decision to, to just give up those, those hours to attend class for years is a struggle that I have. So self-development, self-growth, so, you saw as being as equally important, important for the family, for not the, just for yourself. For myself. And that's a critical perspective there to actually get because... Um, Othniel is saying he did not just see this as something for himself. Right. He sees this as something for his family. I wish I had more time with you. But Gabrielle, talk to me. No, Norman Manley Law School, that's not, a, that, that's not an easy road there. Not at all. What year are you? <laughs> I'm in first year. How do you find it so far? Stressful. Stressful? Very, very yes, stressful. The first year of Norman Manley is normally the, the, <laughs> the pull out here part. So tell me, as a young learner in the, in, the, in the academic world, you are amongst individuals who are adult learners at yes, Norman I Manley. Am. Yes, I am. You, in, your, in your group, because I know you have groups, yeah. do you specifically have individuals in that group that are older than you are, adult learners who yeah. work? Yeah. What's it like? What's the group dynamic like? I mean, they are, and the teachers will point it out, they're normally more driven because they have something going for us, so they have to balance their time more. Um, a lot of us, I'm on the evening stream, and so you find a lot of them on the evening stream. And I was also working when I just started Norman Manley. So it was, it's a big effort to balance your time, and the older ones have families and stuff, and so you can see the sacrifice that they have to make to come to school. So you're seeing it firsthand from Definitely. outside, because it's not something you're personally experiencing. You're mm -hmm. not yet married? <laughs> no. And you don't have any children as yet? No. So you, you're, you're experiencing individuals beside you, with you, in your year group, mm -hmm. who actually have to juggle what lessons are you drawing from this? Um, uh, what, what, what are you learning? How are you growing? It's inspirational. I even have people that are um, doctors in law school now. Um, people who have whole other careers that are there. And it, it's just inspirational. You don't give up on what you want and what you hope for. And you don't let age stop you. Do, do, do you think that because of this, it, it will help you? because you, you, you're, not, you're not yet in the work world, do you think that this experience of working with other individuals who are older than you will translate into better relationships or not when you get into the workplace? It will because the work dynamic is going to be the same with older, younger. Right. So you, help, you get to see their perspective, their views on things, and just help because they're not much different than us. The age. <laughs> Despite what people might think, you learn to live and learn from each other. So walk, walk me through, Gabrielle. Uh, what are two things that stand out for you? Or how, how would you and your colleagues actually help with adult learners being, you know, making the process smoother for them, given all the demands that you have? Because mm -hmm. so, you do have group projects and so forth. Mm -hmm. So in evening stream, we tend to be very cohesive, we're very together, we take notes for who have to miss class, Okay. Um, mm -hmm. we fill them in, um, oftentimes yet there are people attending class from their cars, driving home, mm -hmm. and so you, you try to help them, try to, you know, apologize for them if they miss class, and just keep them abreast. I like that, because the, the, the study of law is so time-consuming, it sucks you up, really. And for them to actually have this major aspect of their lives together with their family, professional lives, and having you as younger learners as support system, 
I think that's a very good um, thing to continue. Definitely. And it will help you later on. You plan on doing further studies or after law, you don't want to do any more reading. I don't have it in mind right now, but I'll see. <laughs> yes, because law, law really takes up a lot. Yes? It does. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, talk to me now, Sir Blair. Yes. The Seventh-day Adventist Church's role yes. in all of this, how do you see, have, has your perspective of ministry and the mission of the church changed because of the impact of these programs at Ten City and Waterford? I wouldn't say change, but more enforced. Okay. Um, yeah. It, it, I, was, I always believe in the mission of the church of, with education. Yes. And it, but it just was in more enforced because of, you know, for, um, previously asked a question about financing. I must say thanks to the church family, individuals at the church at Britain and a whole for their support. And also Central Conference, the WHEEL program, they also help with finances in, in me going to make it possible for, for me to you know, to accomplish my dreams. Gabrielle, I see you nodding your head there uh, while, while up the, you know, speaking because it seemed like it's resonating with you, the church's role. Is that so? Yeah, I definitely receive financial and emotional support so, from my church family. The emotional. Talk to me about that because I'm going to be um, having the final segment with Dr. Roy Dennis, Dr. Shim Hugh and Dr. Mm -hmm. Lincoln Edwards. And I want us to focus on a lot of the points that you would have brought out. How has mm -hmm. the church helped you emotionally? Because many times we speak about the church and it's about Bible study and prayer and I'm not negating those things are important, mm -hmm. but the emotional aspect is not always heard of. I mean, they're not necessarily mutually exclusive either because prayer Correct. is emotional support. So when things get hard and almost impossible, sometimes you don't know what to think about. And I mean, my mother, she's a praying mother and she's also a supportive mother. And she also has um, prayer groups and just groups of friends at church. And they're always there to motivate you and just seeing people at church and even hearing I'm proud of you and stuff like that. That's, that's really nice to hear. The work of the church is not just in terms of the pulpit and not just in terms of the ministries and the department, but also being seen through academic learning, through skills training, and through the emotional help and support that is given to adult learners, lifelong learners. It is a part of what Ellen White speaks of in the book Education when she speaks, and she says it has to do with the whole being and with the whole period of existence possible to man. When we return on the other side, we're going to be having our final segment with uh, Dr. Lincoln Edwards, the president of the Northern Caribbean University, Dr. Shim Hugh uh, from the Heart NSDA Trust, and also Dr. Roy Dennis from the Jamaica Union Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. This is Bless TV special seminar, A Career or Despair. We'll be back with you on the other side. When I left my community in Lilliput, Montego Bay, very volatile area, all I had was a dream. I do not know what will happen come August 2020 when I graduate. But from I stepped foot on this campus in spring 2016, God has been with me. Some of you will finish in four years like our time. Some of you will finish in five years. And some of you will be like me. But listen, your story is your story. When I started Northern Caribbean University, I did not know what to expect. I did not know who to contact. I did not know where to go. But all I needed to do, in my heart, I knew that I needed to do that, and that is to be there on the campus of Northern Caribbean University.
30% of our total youth population comprises unattached young people. That's an alarming number that we are aiming to reduce with the help of the Eyes Mentorship Initiative. Five years ago, you could catch me smoking and drinking at any hours of the day. Being in state care, I lacked some guidance that I really needed. Since joining this program, I had gotten baptized and I'm closer to achieving my goals. The West Jamaica Conference's Eyes Mentorship Program is an initiative that seeks to target at-risk youth by pairing them with trained mentors to positively impact their lives. Have you selected the mentorship coordinator for your church so that you can benefit from the district level training? Start the process now. Get involved. For more information, send us a WhatsApp message at 876-853-4705 and follow us on Instagram at Eyes Mentorship as we empower youth and engage society for the building of a better nation. Welcome back and thank you so very much for your comments. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for your involvement in this seminar put on by the Bless TV Career or Despair. And I can tell you the, in, the, the conversations really have been insightful. So our primary panel with our experts are back and uh, they are going to be sharing with us today, uh, you know, putting some of the pieces together. We're going to be looking on the issue relating to the fear factor that was brought in, into the interview with Rochester. We're also going to be considering what he said in relation to the size of the class and why is it that the Heart, Trust, Heart NSTA Trust puts in place that kind of mechanism. We'll also be discussing with Pastor Roy Dennis what Othniel would have put forward in relation to the collaboration between the church and these kind of educational endeavors. And of course, we'll be discussing with Dr. Lincoln Edwards the issue relating to the expansion of the work of education out of the realm, decentralization of ed academia as it has been done. So let me start there with you, Dr. Edwards, because 30 odd years ago, you had a vision for how the church could have done decentralization. Um, tell us a little about that. Yes, I, I, I saw that there was tremendous potential for, because the church has so much real estate often closed several days of the week. And I said, why not let's use that to teach persons, you know, so that they can have skills or mm -hmm. get the academic credentials. The idea wasn't fashionable at the time. This is in the early 80s. Mm -hmm. So I went back to my little church in Jones Avenue and I started to teach maths and chemistry on a Sunday evening and on a Wednesday evening. And these were two hours before the services. And the idea was an evangelistic tool because the, the community people would come to class and then right after class, it's time for Wednesday night or Sunday night meeting. So it would be easy for them to stay. And as their teacher, if I invite them, you know, it's harder to say no to your mm -hmm. teacher. So that was how we did it. And we had students who, were, who passed their subjects, many who struggled with maths in the traditional schools. That was where they passed their maths and their chemistry. And those were the subjects I taught um, in high school in later years. I was a student at the University of the West Indies at the time, but I gave off my time so that people could benefit from that. So I, I, I knew the potential from long ago. So at the Northern Caribbean University now, we have our students who go out and assist students in homework, with their homework so that they can do well. And of course, we have the online learning that, that people can uh, sign up for and pursue their dreams. So there are many opportunities. And with respect to that age difference, I started dental school when I was 45 years of age. So I know about mm. that. I was teaching pharmacology to the medical students and the dental students at Loma Linda. And I had a lab because I had a grant from the National Institute of Health. So I had to manage my lab, manage the funds they gave me. And I had a graduate student and a postdoctoral fellow to manage. So I was in class with the very students I was teaching. Mm. So let's say it's periodontics. We are all sitting there, all 100 of us, taking periodontics. Then when it's time for pharmacology, I would get up and assume my role as a teacher, taught them what I, they needed to do in pharmacology, and then resume my role as a student. You didn't have any issues doing that? Oh, I, I loved it. The energy of those young people carried me along. I was their teacher. They wanted to see me succeed. And as someone mentioned before, there's always something you can trade off with people in a group. So I dealt with their emotional issues. 
So when they had challenges, I was the person they came to. I would listen to them. And, and so we formed quite a bond. And I had insights about students that I would not have had had I not been in that class. I learned a lot about students sitting in class with them and experiencing that. And I had a family, a wife, and three children. But you learn to balance these things and to make, uh, you know, to prioritize and to achieve your goals. But as Gabrielle noted, and it's something that the studies have in fact shown, that persons who come to the classroom or the educational environment at an adult age, that because of their focus, because of what they have sometimes to deal with, they come in with a greater sense of uh, direction and clarity and motivation to get it right. Yes. And so it's very important that even for individuals who are watching, that we understand that st starting learning at any stage outside of the normal block is not, a, not something that puts you behind. It's something that actually can propel you forward. And the young people are your friends. They are there to help you. They want to help. Can they see the appearance in you? Is in it that Northern Caribbean University would consider, for example, in its marketing and advertising, to change the way or the image or the face of the, uh, the advertising to also include persons who are of adult learning years? Because majority of the flyers are really geared towards yes. the younger cohort. And that way, individuals seeing their age cohort in it, it can also send the message that NCU is here for us as well. Oh, absolutely. We are, we are prepared to work with the constituency to, mm -hmm. to satisfy the needs of the constituency. Because the adult learning co co um, cohort is a very essential cohort. Yes. And that's particularly one of the reasons, Dr. Shimhu, that Heart NSDA is moving around the towns in Jamaica with some buses. Correct. What correct. are you doing? What are you doing in buses? Why are you not stay in an office of AC? What are you doing on buses? You know? Well, we have always been itinerant. We've always been agile and flexible. Um, hence the reason why we have close to 100 community training interventions wow. supporting the mighty move of heart for nation building. Including Seventh-day Adventist churches. Including, most definitely. And, and we have continued to pivot based on the partnership. It's about collaboration and not competition. And we've proven that in, in every facet of what it is that we're called to do. Rochester earlier spoke about the fact, though, that, you know... 25 per he, he, he's waiting and you listened to his story i did and how he has just slowly been integrating he's so excited about learning right. and he's ready to go to the next level right. but here comes heart nst holding him back need 25 persons for our class i want to dispel that myth <laughs> that we are not at all. In fact, we are a bridge over troubled waters. So we are about facilitation. The truth is the cost-benefit analysis requires that we have a particular number of persons in a group. We are also labor market driven. And because we realize that a lot of persons may not even be aware about the programs, that's why you've seen us on the road in every social media promoting and so on. There are also other strategies that can be used for him to be certified. And we had some discussions before but by way of information, prior learning assessment is one. We can come into his workplace as well and have him certified in that space in order for him to be able to achieve another stackable credential. But we do promote having a particular class size. We think about return on investment. We think about the 3% contributors and the fact that there is a cost associated with training. Yeah, but that's borne by taxpayers. You and I can have the conversation about that afterwards most definitely but dr shimu i want I, I want somebody is listening and someone is saying listen i have spent 20 30 years in my field Correct. i don't need to go I, I don't need to go and get certified what what are the benefits of certification and then i'm going to make a, a statement Excellent. So without a certificate, you don't have a chance. And there may be opportunities that come mm. up that you're able to capitalize on. Plus, we heard Rochester mention that by going to classes with his child, he became motivated. Sometimes it's about achieving a dream. You may not That's necessarily right. plan to, right. to transcend into that profession, mm. but you've acquired something that empowers. You've shown your family members, your community. So for example, while working at Ebony Park Academy, 
Academy, a heart institution focusing on agriculture. I did crop production level two as the deputy manager. Sat with persons 17, 18, 19 for two main reasons. One, mm -hmm. so that I could have the experience of being in the training so I can, yes. you know, help to, to yes. mold and to guide and to shape and also for self-actualization. Yes. So it's important too. So it's not yes. only about the office and the, the title and the position. Not at all. Self actualization, actualization. Correct, correct you know and, and i want to plug this in for those of us who are in the other cohorts uh let me tell you when you get a heart she's not going to say it, but i can say when you get a heart nsta certificate you're getting money in countries such as canada my brother-in-law has moved from jamaica to canada mm -hmm. and i wish i could tell you dr dennis the massive stride that he has been making not just in his family life but also in terms of finances by virtue of his heart nsta certificate he doesn't have a bachelor's like me he has a heart certificate mm -hmm. and in these industrial countries in these first world countries dr edwards your certificate is of greater value in many instances than your um your your, your academic degree so dr dennis let, let's wrap with you the church's mission i heard uh, before I get to the church's mission, I wanted to touch the matter of the fear factor mm -hmm. that was brought up by Rochester. Well, first of all, I want to express appreciation for their testimonies. Yes. Rochester, Chad, Neil, and Gabriel. I also want to express appreciation to hear the testimonies of the men. Uh, since the 80s and the 90s, 75% of the persons at higher level education are now female. And they are the ones who are inclined to upgrade themselves. So for years, I've been pushing for men to upgrade themselves. And today, I, I feel pleased. Man, no one be no bookie, doctor. <laughs> doctor Dennis, man, no one be no bookie. And, and that's what they say when I go to the seminar. So but, but as Dr. Shim Hugh pointed out, without skills and degrees that are certified, then you are not able to finance your way. Yeah. So it brings fulfillment and it brings um, financial satisfaction. So, so the fear factor. Um, when I returned to do my master's after 10 years, even though I got ten the first year. Yes, after I did 10 years in the field, I decided to oh, oh. go back. Yes, yes, after 10 years working in the field, doing my bachelor's, and I returned to do my master's. I was so afraid in the first class. And I remember the psychologist <laughs> who was teaching the class was probably my age, maybe he went on to, you know, immediately after his bachelor's degree, and he asked us how we felt about coming back to school. And there are several reasons why people are afraid when they go back. Um, the, the fear of failure, mm -hmm. the fear of yeah. the lack of finances, starting over. And, and family and starting over, and maybe the lack of family support um, is real. But I, I want to say that we need to change the focus. They said fear is like an octopus that will grip you around the neck and squeeze out every desire in you to be successful. Another person says fear is false evidence appearing real. Yeah. So, so I want to change that. We, in psychology, we have a displacement replacement technique. So we want to displace the word fear and we want to put in the word, replace it with the word focus. And our focus should be on the benefits that are to be derived. Now, um, Rochester spoke about the fear of having a younger teacher um, in the classroom, teaching him, directing him. But, but, but the teacher has the skills and the expertise that he needs to survive. Mm -hmm. And so, so we now have to move away from fear to focus to say, sitting under the tutelage of this young teacher, fear to I am heading in the direction that I need to go in order to provide for myself and my family. And when I reach a particular age, he's talking about what, being 60 now? And yes, so on. 61. That's the time when people start looking back and evaluating their lives. And if at 50, you equip yourself so that by the time you're 60, you're in a satisfying career or, or profession, when you look back, you don't have to regret all your life. Amen. So, so, so that's important. So we're moving now fear to focus. I like that concept that Dr. Dennis is leaving us with from fear 
to focus. I want to thank Dr. Dennis. I want to thank Dr. Shim Hugh. I want to thank Dr. Edwards from Northern Caribbean University, from the Heart NSTA, and from Jamaica Union for sharing with us. And also, a very special thank you to our four um, testimonials, if you would want to call it, individuals who came and shared with us, Gabrielle and Othniel and Chad Anthony and Rochester, for being with us and for just opening wider the conversation on how adult learning truly can have an impact in the pandemic or post the pandemic era. This has been a most engaging conversation and perhaps you know someone who right now is struggling to go back into school. Someone who is in fear of actually making the shift from one career path to a next. We hope that you will be able to share with them these key principles that have been given to us today. From fear to focus, skills pay the bills. And of course, as Dr. Edwards has shared, that we can use our church centers, our churches as centers where individuals in the community can be able to gain skills and upgrade themselves. The work of the Seventh-day Adventist Church is much broader than the work that is done on any single day of the week. It is encapsulated in the book, Ellen White's book, the book Education. And in that first chapter, she clearly states what the work of true education is. And it has to do with the whole being and with the whole period of existence possible to man. I want to thank you for joining with us. Thank you for sharing the link. Thank you for inviting others to share in this discussion. And on behalf of all of us here at Bless TV, we want to say thanks to you for joining and also thanks to our partners, namely the Jamaica Union Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, Leroy Kondapa, Peter Ponal, Hose Assembly and Supplies, Carleen Llewellyn, and of course, the Ayadpa Bookstore, where this recording was done at 74 Constant Spring Road. Until next time, I am Omar Zeddy Oliphant. Walk good.